We're going to start with Chip. Are you okay? All right. Um, and I'm serious, Chip, about after after you do this bill, I I really want you to go to bed because because <laughs> it's necessary. Um, the uh, I have a mask on because I may have to go off screen for a minute. We have we have um, a contractor coming over and who might be poking his head in the back here. So um, I'm going to go off screen and uh, uh, sometime relatively soon, but um, I'll be I can still hear. All right. Um, we are going to have a bill introduction on H308. Um, so Damien, we have you for the rest of the more for the next hour, basically, but the focus, my primary focus is on 308. Um, and if we have to get back to 320 and 329, we'll reschedule. Um, so H308 is an act relating to authorizing card check elections. This is a labor bill and it's primary sponsor is Representative Triano. So Chip, if you can give us a bill introduction and then we'll let Damien do a walkthrough, that would be great. Sure, thank you, Chair Stevens. Um, and uh, it will be um, uh, a high overhead uh, summary of this bill because I know that Damien is extremely capable of taking you through the uh, specifics of the bill. So, you know, um, right now, um, there has been a decline in labor union participation over the last 10, 15 years. Um, but recently there has been a, a, a minor spike in participation. And that I'm told is because um, uh, that uh, union jobs are better protected um, in this COVID time uh, than non-union jobs. Um, we hear from our own Senator Sanders um, in criticism of um, Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, who is the wealthiest man in the country, who in Alabama presently is fighting um, an organi uh, organizing uh, a union organization, uh, trying to uh, get better conditions um, in, in their work in their workplace. Um, so that's the that's the basis. That's what brings this bill about: is that both public and private. Um, businesses can um, do quite a few things to block the organization of a bargaining unit or a labor union within their shop. And um, this will make it a little bit easier for this organization to happen. If um, a group organizes um, and takes a legitimate vote, um, it will require 50% plus one um, in the vote, uh, positive vote, in order to uh, organize uh, a bargaining unit in the shop. Um, so um, right now, um, these type of organizations are subject to um, sometimes um, mandatory meetings that would uh, require uh, them to listen to anti-union material um, and uh, uh, by, put on by the employers. Um, so um, once a um, 50, percent plus one vote is taken, um, the Labor Relations, uh, Vermont Labor Relations Board is then um, obligated to certify this as a bargaining unit. Um, there is a requirement that a third party participate, and if none is, uh, and this is similar to uh, the bill we spoke about a while back, um, if no third party is available, then uh, Labor Relations Board would look for a third party. But ultimately, um, the Labor, Vermont Labor Relations Board would certify this election and it would become a legitimate bargaining unit after that. Um, it would cut down on any interference that uh, may exist on behalf of employers that uh, might um, try to scare people off and, uh, or, or any other tactic that may happen. So that's a basic overview that, uh, and, and uh, you know, um, minorities um, tend to do better if they, in their, uh, uh, in their careers, if they're members of unions, um, 
And um, we would join nine states, California, New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Maine, Illinois, Oregon, Washington, and Minnesota, or New Mexico, um, in, uh, in, if we were to pass this bill um, and um, help um, or keep, from, keep um, employers from, uh, <laughs> I'm losing it here, <laughs> from uh, preventing organizing uh, of bargaining units. I think it's important. Um, you know, um, I watched my father as a school teacher in New York City uh, participate in the uh, United uh, Teachers, uh, UFT, uh, United Federation of Teachers under Albert Shanka, uh, Shanka um, um, go on strike. Um, and um, at that time, uh, in the early 60s, teachers were paid very, very little, even in New York City. And I, I, I saw that um, it changed the economic status of our family, having him being paid better as a New York City school teacher. He was able to retire in comfort um, uh, for his remaining years um, and support his family of six um, in, in, in adequate shape. So I've been a pro-union for all my life as a result of that experience as a fairly young man. Um, so um, I would happily turn it over to, to Damien at this point because the fog is setting in. <laughs> Thank you. Um, question, Representative Murphy, before we get to Damien. Thanks, Chair Stevens. This is a kind of a general question, and I don't know. Um, it certainly, I can be told I will find out the answer as we progress. But it just always comes to mind for me, and certainly um, from emails I've received on this bill, as as um, constituents are already reaching out. I'm just curious, what would this obligate me to? as one of the 50% minus one who didn't wish to be represented by this bargaining unit. And, and I think that's, that's the piece that I'm most concerned about. Not, um, not that then, uh, anyway, that, that's the concern I have is just, if I truly voted against being represented and now I am, what am I obligated for? And I, I can speak I to think that. We'll give I, you I thought that was yeah. probably kind of a labor law thing, so thank you. Yes. Yeah. I'll probably uh, turn it over to Damien. All right. Yeah. And Damien, just to be clear as we're starting, I just, and I, I mean, this is, this, this would allow, well, let me, you go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead to the presentation already. So please go ahead. Yeah, so maybe what makes the most sense is I will do a quick walkthrough of the bill and then I'll answer Representative Murphy's question, and then I'll take the other questions. Um, so uh, let me, it, is it better if I share my screen with this committee or if you look at it on your own device? I find I have to ask uh, uh, now because each committee seems to have its own preference. I actually prefer to look at it on my own. I always do, but I certainly don't stand in the way of someone who wants it on the big screen. Yeah, no, I think it would be correct. I, please put it up on the screen. Okay, you got it. Um, I'm sorry, Representative Plasic. Well, no, that's all right. I was just gonna agree. I hate screens. <laughs> they mess with me up big time, but whatever, no big deal. We're all with you. Uh, Representative uh, Damien. Okay, so I'll do the walkthrough fairly quickly so that I can take it down off the screen for folks whose devices have, have trouble or uh, where it's in microprint. Um, and, uh, so what this bill does, as uh, Representative Troiano mentioned, is it would provide for card check elections. And, and card check elections, uh, the name comes from uh, the days and sometimes you still uh, do this where you you basically would sign a card saying um, I support unionizing in order to and then the union would collect the cards and submit them in order to have an election uh, held and the idea here is that if you already have a majority uh, once you get the card signed then there's no reason to have an election because uh, the outcome is already decided. So um, that's, that's what the card check election is. 
uh, overall. So the first section, section one, applies to the State Employees Labor Relations Act and the Judiciary Employees Re Labor Relations Act. So these are two different branches of state employees. The State Employees Labor Relations Act also applies to the Vermont State Colleges, the University of Vermont, and the state's attorney's offices. Uh, so what it would basically provide, if you look, for those of you who are following on your, uh, on your own, it's on the bottom of page two, uh, starting at line 16 and then running down onto the top of page three, it provides that notwithstanding any other provision of the subsection, um, and the subsection governs uh, determining whether an election is appropriate, uh, if the L Vermont Labor Relations Board, because in the the State Employees Labor Relations Act and Judiciary Employees Labor Relations Act, when you're petitioning to have an election for a bargaining unit, you submit that directly to the Labor Board. Uh, so if the Labor Board finds uh, that the petition bears the signatures of at least 50% plus one of the employees in the bargaining unit um, that the board is deemed appropriate, uh, the board shall certify the person or the labor organization as the exclusive representative of the bargaining unit. Um, and then subdivision B here provides that certification would only be available when there's no other person or labor organization currently certified or recognized as the representative of the bargaining unit. And just to remind everyone here, person is the broad legal sense of the term. So this includes, uh, it could include an individual uh, or more likely uh, some other legal entity that is the organization representing the bargaining unit. Um, and so basically what, what that gets at is that if you're seeking to replace the current union, um, or to decertify the current union, it requires it to go to a secret ballot uh, election. But if you're seeking to uh, be represented by a union in the first place, then this card check election process is open to you. The changes in subdivision or subsection H uh, are simply changes to, rec uh, to reconcile the existing language with the possibility of the certification of a bargaining representative um, by card check election. Section two relates to uh, the Teachers uh, Labor Relations Act. So this covers uh, school teachers and school administrators. Um, and currently uh, there is a process here where the school board has 15 calendar days after it receives a petition uh, to determine whether it's going to require or waive the, the referendum, which is basically the election. Um, and then uh, there is a, a continued process there where if the school board decides that it's going to waive the referendum, in other words, it's going to recognize the union without requiring an election, there's a process where uh, 10% uh, of the teachers or administrators in the bargaining unit can submit another uh, petition um, asking for a secret ballot election and then requiring it. And so that would be replaced with the requirement that within 10 business days after the petition is submitted, the parties have to agree on it, an impartial third party to examine the petition and determine whether a majority of the teachers or administrators in the bargaining unit support being represented by the union. If the parties fail to agree on an impartial third party within that 10 business day time period, then the Vermont Labor Relations Board would step in as a sort of de facto impartial third party. Uh, and then again, if they determine that a majority of the teachers or administrators in the bargaining unit support being represented by the union, then they would certify the union as the representative. Um, and then again, the remaining changes in subsections B and C uh, are to reconcile the existing law with the potential that you could have the certification of a bargaining unit by card check election. Um, 
And then sections three and four relate to the state uh, labor relations act. So this is a unique labor relations act in Vermont statute. It represents a, or it applies to a very, very tiny subset of private sector employees whose employers do not do business in interstate commerce. Um, so that means no out-of-state tourists, no products crossing state lines, no customers across state lines. Um, so you can imagine in this day and age, that's a very, very small subset. Anyone who's doing business in interstate commerce is covered by the National Labor Relations Act under federal law. Um, but for this very small subset of employers could potentially, or workplaces that could potentially be covered, again, it's adding the same requirement um, that uh, if there's a showing of 50% plus one to the Vermont Labor Relations Board on the petition, the board would certify the union. And again, it's only available for the initial certification of a union. Uh, if there's subsequently a push to be represented by another union or to decertify the existing union, that would have to go to a more formal secret ballot election. Uh, the final changes in section five are the Municipal Labor Relations Act. And again, just as with uh, state employees, judiciary employees and state labor relations act, when the petition submitted to the labor relations board, they determine if a majority of the employees in the bargaining unit support being represented by the union. And if they do, there's no need to go to an election. Uh, and then the, uh, again, the, the certification by card check only applies with the initial recognition of a union, not to decertification or uh, union substitution um, issues. And it would take effect on July 1 of this year. So I'm gonna stop the share now and answer Representative Murphy's question. So the question was, if I don't support a union um, or I'm a, an individual in a bargaining unit who doesn't support being represented by a union, but a majority of the bargaining unit votes to be represented by the union, what happens? What are my obligations? So um, there, I think first and foremost, um, our state law has an outdated provision in it, uh, which is no longer applicable um, because it was ruled unconstitutional by the US Supreme Court a few years back. Um, so some folks may have seen this on the state law. It's called an agency fee or a collective bargaining service fee or a fair share fee, depending on the statute or who's talking about it. What it was uh, during the, the roughly four decades that it existed was um, basically, uh, so members of the union would be charged full dues, non-members of the union, people who didn't support the union or didn't join for whatever reason, would be charged partial dues, um, up to 85% of the amount of regular union dues. And the catch with those partial dues was that they could only be used for uh, costs directly re related to representing the bargaining unit. So uh, resolving grievances, uh, addressing contract issues, and it couldn't be used by the union for political speech um, because that would have violated uh, the First Amendment right to free speech. The Supreme Court, as I said, struck that down a few years ago on uh, free speech grounds, again, saying that requiring people to even support the union was compelled speech. 